Hi everyone, we are joined by Adam Savage, Mythbuster, maker, builder, YouTuber, all sorts of stuff. Not that long ago, we were in his cave in the United States and I said, if you're ever in London, come to the Royal Society and we'll show you some stuff. You're in London. Here I am, <laughs> yes. You're at the Royal Society. <laughs> now, Adam, one thing I've noticed when I visited your place is you love like swords and lightsabers and replicas of weapons and things. And I always yeah. associate you with, you know, dueling and battling and things yeah. like that. Now, Rupert here, Rupert Baker from the Royal Society knows that about you too. And he has found this book and we're going to be talking to you today about dueling. Really? Dueling. Mm -hmm. He is actually surprised. <laughs> no, we, I really we, am. We didn't That's wonderful. Him. We didn't tell him. Rupert, what is this book that you've gotten out to show Adam today? What is it? Uh, it's called Academy de l'Espée, which I think means the Academy of the Sword. Oh. And it's from 1628. Yeah. It is a kind of mathematical explanation of sword fighting and dueling. Really? Mm. Does that not sound up yeah, your alley? It totally sounds right <laughs> up my alley. I've got, I've got good news and bad news. Yeah. The good news, dueling, mathematics, yeah. stuff you love. Bad news? It's in French, isn't it? And there's no lightsabers. There's no, <laughs> there's no lightsabers. I expected that. Uh. There are some beautiful replicas of the pistols that Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr used in their duel, made by Uberti. And about every six months, I go looking if they're coming up for auction because I want a pair. And just last night, I was looking. So just this that. is incredibly perfect. So it's by an author called Thibault, one of the great theorists of sword fighting. Holy cow. Wow. So there's your title again, Académie de l'Espée. Girard Thibault. The theory and practice. And my French is pretty terrible, but that definitely <laughs> says mathematical rules. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that might be his circular mysteria. Mysterious circle. You see that in a lot of the diagrams. This thing here, so we're going to keep an eye out for that, are we? All right. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you notice, this must have had a very um, highfalutin audience because it's got lots and lots of these plates at the front. And it's got a dedication to the king there. So Louis the Thirteenth. so this is from 1628. Is this like when you watch a movie and you've got to sit through like three or four logos of the different <laughs> Absolutely, companies? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Executive producers. Universal <laughs> pictures. I mean, they're great to look at. They've all got mottos. Everything Fine. with God, nothing without reason. Oh my goodness, there's a load of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A blankety blank projection. <laughs> yeah, you might want to speed this bit up, Jane. Yeah. And a chicken with clover on its wings. And then we get into all the description. So the first two thirds of the book is just description of okay. what the plates are going to be showing you later. So they all refer to different tableaus. Oh, okay. So you would be book. turning back and forth. Yeah. So here is the first plate. Wow. This is footwork, <laughs> is it here? You reckon? Yeah, I think it's to wow. do with the reach and how far you can point your rapier and where your feet should be at any time. Right, the arc of holding it out. Mm. There's definitely influence of uh, Vitruvian man. Yeah. I don't know what these little skittles are. Well, I think those are footprints. Do you think they're footprints? Are they the footmarks? They oh yeah, good point, they might be, yeah. Or they're juggling pins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you can sword fight and juggle at the same time. <laughs> All labelled body parts. Oh, yeah. all, right. all anatomically correct, yes. Yeah. And this guy's having a great time not quite getting his sword into the scabbard. <laughs> He's just missed. He's just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. A lovely bit of perspective drawing, isn't it? He's obsessed with this stuff on the floor. He's like, he circles. And there are various different positions to, to stand in. Yeah. yeah. Costume historians would have a field day with this as well. All, mm -hmm. the, all the gear you had to wear. Oh, that's a lovely picture, isn't it? The different ways the swords cross. And again, always these circles. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's his, that's his number thing. Two, yeah, number circulus three. number one, yeah. Let's see what we're up to in this one. Oh yeah, now we get down to some actual sword fighting. Different I appreciate their cuirasses here. They're not exceedingly flattering. They're not, are they? No. no. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to make yourself a cuirass, you'd at least want to put a six pack on it. I would you? imagine. All the different positions, and every time they're standing in different places on his like his beloved circles. So presumably these are all numbered, and they're all referring back to the text. Yeah, the text will earlier. tell you what's going on in yeah. each particular diagram and where you should be standing and where your sword should be pointing. I mean, it's like every possible position here has been covered. Mm -hmm. like, Ouch! Has he got him there? Oh, he's yeah. got him right through the eye. Yeah, that's a sneaky move, isn't it? Oh yeah, nice. Yeah. All right, Adam. Here's a question yeah. for you. What's your all-time favourite sword duel in movies? Oh, that's oh, it's a Princess Bride. Yeah, yep. Inigo Montoya and uh, Wesley. Dread Pirate Roberts. Oh, a spoiler saying it was Wesley, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think we can. <laughs> All right. Spoiler alert! You just put if a you tag in the, the front. Princess um, Bride. Don't watch that bit. Part of what I love about something like this is there's so much specificity to every one of these, and this is the end result of somebody's deep obsession. 
of attempting to build a taxonomy of proper sword fighting techniques. Mm. And whether they're right or wrong, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of obsession in and of itself. <laughs> and the amount of labor of multiple people to achieve this is thrilling. Yeah. There's a very famous Japanese film called Sword of Doom in which the opening sword fight is only shots of the opponent's feet. And apparently this is really important because in the use of a samurai sword, your feet are way more important than almost any other aspect. And in sword fighting and dueling, I, when I was taught stage fighting, it's all about where your feet are. Yeah. So he's, he's, caught, he's yeah, attempting he's, to codify that. Hang on a second, what's going on here? Oh, wow. They're just all that's happy a, that we've read the book this far. Yeah, that's the chill out zone after the, the sword party fighting party is finished. <laughs> <laughs> the after party. The after party. Oh, that's um, interesting as well. But again, this is overlaid by his magic circle pattern thing that he loves so much. And this is absolutely Vitruvian, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. We're out, we're out in the field now. Oh, yeah. look, we've got some firearms. Oh, there's, there's some firearms, yeah. Oh, wow. Is he saying if someone's got firearms, you take this zigzag pattern towards them? Does it make you harder to shoot? Yeah. Serpentine. And here I think he's pointing out that if someone's pointing a gun at you, stab someone in the throat and put them in the way of the gun, <laughs> which is a very sound technique. Yeah, that's what, it's what I usually do. Yeah. <laughs> Adam, you mentioned Alexander Hamilton before, who famously died in a duel. Yeah. The Royal Society has its own Alexander Hamilton, who dies in a duel, that Rupert has found for us. And that's the other thing we want to show you. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. Okay, so it was a chap called Rawlins, and he was elected very early in the history of the Royal Society. So this is the Royal Society's first journal book. Oh, my goodness. Covering the very first meetings of the Society. I love that your thumb is... Adding more to this is just this is, that's an yeah. amazing patina. And there's lots of other interesting things to see in this book as well, including all the signatures of the original fellows as they signed in. Oh my goodness. So just in passing, there's Christopher Wren's signature <laughs> and Robert Boyle. And the first meeting of the society, which took place on the 28th of November, 1660. Incredible. But for our interest, we're going to the Boxing Day meeting, the 26th of December, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they add a few of these people to the fellowship, uh, including Mr. Boyle and Mr. Oldenburg. And the one we're interested in is Mr. Rawlins. Okay. This guy Rawlins has been proposed to become a fellow right in the first year of the Royal Society. Yeah, so. yeah. And the one below him is Mr. Ashmole, who founded the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford. So, <laughs> some, some good names in there. All the big names. What do we know of Rawlins? Uh, not a great deal, consults crib sheet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> proposed on the 26th of December 1660, he was a gentleman of the privy purse to the Duke of York. So in these days, obviously, some of the people who were becoming fellows of the Royal Society didn't necessarily have to have great scientific credentials. Quite yeah. often they were just well connected. So he was exactly. probably not a great scientist, he was probably just an influential dude. Yeah. All right, so what's this got to do with dueling? <laughs> um, that's how he died. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Wow. Dies in a duel. So I would have loved to show you his signature in the charter book of the Royal Society, which comes in in the mid 1660s. But? But he didn't make it that far. The only evidence I've been able to find about what happened to him is in the diary of Samuel Pepys. And I'd strongly recommend the diary of Samuel Pepys okay. if you want to find out what was going on in 1660s London. Although I confess I've read a version called the Shorter Pepys. Because this is, <laughs> this is one tenth of the whole thing. This is oh, okay. the year 1662. He quite wrote a it, famous book, isn't it? It's quite he wrote it from 1660 to 1669. Hmm. In 1662, on the 19th of August, talking about going to work at the Navy office. So Mr. Coventry did tell us of the duel between Mr. Jermyn, nephew to my Lord St. Albans, and Colonel Giles Rawlins, the latter of whom is killed and the first mortally wounded, as it is thought. Oh, wow. Footnote says this was a quarrel over the Countess of Shrewsbury, and the duels were fought on the 17th. And are described in Grammar. Grant, yeah, I've not come across that reference. They fought against Captain Thomas Howard, my Lord Carlisle's brother, and another unknown, who they say had armour on, that they could not be hurt, so that one of their swords went up to the hilt against it. They had horses ready and are fled. But what is most strange, Howard sent one challenge, but they could not meet, and then another, but did meet yesterday at the old Pall Mall at St James's. And that could be more or less exactly where we're standing at the moment. Oh, wow. Because right. this, was, this, was, this was all fields in the 17th century. Right. And it was one of the dueling grounds. And so we'll in not... time, that duel could have happened within a few hundred feet of where definitely, we are. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Wow. I like, would not to the last tell German what the quarrel was, nor doth anybody know. The court is much concerned in this fray, and I'm glad of it, hoping it will cause some good laws against it. Mm. Right. So Peeps is hoping, yeah, this death in a death in a duel will right. be able to calm down a bit, and we'll get some uh, some laws against dueling, some sword control laws. <laughs> that, that is thrilling. I really, that's amazing. Yeah, actually, there's an interesting footnote. Dueling was prohibited by royal proclamations and by the Articles of War. The most recent proclamation had been ineffective. 
the King actually pardoned the Duke of Buckingham for his part in the worst duel of the reign in 1668. Proclamations remained futile until the manners changed. That's pretty constant among humans. <laughs> yeah. We've got a fellow killed in a duel. Yep. Dueling pictures. That's wonderful. Yeah, who knows what Colonel Giles Rawlings would have discovered scientifically had he, wow. had he spent more time at the Royal Society and less time sword fighting. This is what this place really is, though, right? It's an iceberg where everything you look at is the top of a giant amount of information. Mm. That's incredible. All right. Well, you've still got a few more hours here. I know you want to make some videos yes. for, te for Tested. <laughs> yeah. So go and have a look at Tested at some point as well. And you can go and see what else Adam has been looking at while he's been here at the Royal Society. Cool. Lovely. That was delightful. The turning of the crank here and listening to... Like, I don't just hear clicks. I hear someone's brain in the 40s building this and bringing it to fruition. I, it thrills me, this object. Adam's got something else up his sleeve. Adam... What's in the box? What's in the box, 